Hey, Mike Pinto from thesmartguitarist.com here. This project is not a guitar project, it's actually a home stereo thing. But the build is very similar to guitar pedals, so we're doing it anyway. A friend told me that when he listens to mono records on his stereo turntable, plugged into a stereo preamp, he felt the integrity of the mono sound was compromised in it being split into two sides. So he connects a Y cable from the turntable into a female to female adapter and then into another Y cable into the preamp. This passively sums the left and right sides, which he says reduces noise, increases gain, and makes the sound more focused. But he sets all this up and tears it all down every time he switches between mono and stereo records. Clearly, a switching box is a better solution. So here are the parts. All we need is four RCA jacks, a switch, and an enclosure. The first task is to drill the enclosure. I've applied masking tape to one side, and I'll measure how far from the edge the jacks should be, and pencil in a line to keep the jacks lined up. I decided the line should be a half inch from the edge. Next, I need to check the inset distance from the end of the enclosure to allow enough clearance for the jack from the corner and allow enough clearance for the four jacks between each other. To do this, I assemble the jack and with the two nuts kind of squeeze it onto the edge of the enclosure to visualize it in place, and then measure from there. I decided on 21 30 seconds. I mark it, then I mark it on the other side, and then I mark the locations for the inside two jacks. I decided on those being 23 30 seconds from the outside jacks. Next, using a center punch, I pounded some dimples into the enclosure where I'll drill the holes to help center the drill bit. Next, I use my Dremel drill press to drill pilot holes with those guide dimples helping me center the bit. And next, I drilled a 5 16 of an inch hole using the pilot hole as a guide Note, I really should have put it in the vise while drilling. It was a little tough to hold in place with one hand. I tested the fit of a jack and then proceeded with drilling the remaining holes. I then installed the jacks and checked how much room I'd have for the switch. I had plenty of room. So I did the same thing again. Pilot hole, then the actual hole, quarter inch this time, then I installed the switch. You really should start a project with a schematic, but this box is so simple, I just waited until it was time to wire it to figure it out. So we've got four jacks, left and right in and left and right out, and a single pole double throw switch, which has three terminals. All I really needed is a single pole single throw switch with two terminals, but I have a bunch of these in my stock. So the left in and left out will always be connected to each other, and the right in and right out will always be connected to each other. Let's try the left out connected to this throw of the switch, and the right in connected to the pole of the switch. So let's see, when the switch is thrown this way, with these two terminals connected, the left comes in, goes to left out, and this wire doesn't go anywhere else. Right comes in, goes to right out, and this wire doesn't go anywhere else. So this is stereo mode, where left and right stay separate. But when the switch is thrown this way, with these two terminals connected, left comes in, goes to left out, but then this wire, via the switch, contacts this wire, which connects it to the right side. So then all four jacks are connected together in mono operation. And this effectively passively sums left and right, the same as my friend's Y cable setup did. And also like his Y cable setup, the ground between left and right sides are connected, and will be connected in this project by the jacks all being mounted to the same metal enclosure. So this is the final schematic, only requires four short wires. So following the schematic, I soldered the wires to the jacks in place. Notice the switch isn't installed. 
Because the switch is tinier, it's more tedious to solder inside the enclosure. I'll solder it separately, out of the box, and then solder its wires to the jacks once it's inside the box. Here you can see how much easier it is to lightly clamp the switch in a way that's more accessible, and just solder it like this. And now it's ready to install in the enclosure, and we'll solder the final two wires. And that's it! Nice and tidy, and all done wiring it up. And now it's time to test it with the multimeter. I set the meter to measure resistance to test whether the two probes connect. Here, checking the right in and out jacks, the zero means no resistance, meaning they're connected whichever way the switch is flipped. Same is true of the left in and out jacks. But here's the real test, checking the left in and right in jacks. In stereo mode, the one means infinite resistance, no connection. But when I flip it to mono mode, we get the zero, which means they're connected. Try it with the left and right out jacks. Not connected in stereo mode, flip it to mono and they are connected. So that's it, we know it works. And here it is finished. I printed up some labels on computer paper and attached them with clear packing tape. Not the most road-worthy solution, but it'll work just fine sitting in my friend's stereo cabinet. As a little joke between us, I put Pinto Audio in a font like the old Macintosh audio gear. Notice I labeled the jacks in slash out and out slash in. Because it's passive, it doesn't really matter which right-left jack pair you connect the inputs and outputs to. And so that's it. It's all done. For more content like this and lots more guitar-related stuff, subscribe on YouTube and also check out thesmartguitarist.com and join the email list there. See you next time.